welcome to Streamlabs Live, a new weekly podcast where I interview streamers and people in the streaming industry. I'm your host, Doug Vandelay, broadcasting to you live from the Streamlabs Vancouver office located in the unceded territory of the Coastal Salish people of British Columbia. If you missed the show with Stacey Roy and Mike Parkinson last week, you can watch the VOD on YouTube in the link below or subscribe to the audio podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, and anywhere you usually find your podcasts. Before we get started today, I'd like to introduce Streamlabs Merch. Create your own online store in seconds, get paid every month, receive custom alerts with each purchase to thank your viewers. And with worldwide shipping and lightning fast delivery, it's truly magical. Create, design, and start your own custom store by visiting streamlabs.com forward slash merch now. I'd also like to give a special shout out to Curtis Carey, who made the title animation and music for this podcast. You can watch his creative stream on twitch.tv forward slash no such thing as grown ups. Some of you might have noticed this little box down here in the bottom of your screen. That's a live view of my phone screen in which I'm uh, using the Streamlabs OBS remote control to produce this entire podcast at the touch of a button. You can follow along with my scene changes as I switch between the guests and myself during the podcast. And uh, speaking of that guest, I'm joined today by uh, Pete from Gaming Careers, all the way from the United Kingdom. How's your day going, Pete? Hi, mate. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm well, thanks. Um, so uh, you used to be a, or uh, until quite recently, a freelance videographer. What, what kind of work did you do before Gaming Careers? I mean, I've always, um, I've always dabbled in video. My main job definitely wasn't being a freelance videographer. Um, I actually wrote software for a company that dealt with streaming. Um, but I've always had some sort of freelance projects going on in the background just because I've loved working with video so much. So, um, yeah, I've, I've, I've recently just quit my full-time job to do this full-time. Um, so really excited about that. But, yeah, I've, I've, always, I've always done little bits of video. I've always had interest in video and in live streaming. So it's, it's a really really is a dream come true to be able to do it full time. Yeah, congratulations on that. And for the viewers who don't know, could you describe the Gaming Careers channel for us? Yeah, it's um, essentially it's a YouTube channel that tries to teach people everything that they need to do in terms of streaming or content creation to make a career out of gaming. I mean, the, the broader sense of the channel is that it's going to have more um, more avenues into careers in gaming, so not just streaming and content creation, but certainly the success and the main focus has been helping people with OBS, Streamlabs OBS, alerts, microphones, all those kind of things to make you guys get a better professional live stream. So it just started as a hobby. I started the channel um, about 18 months ago now, just because I had quite a lot of knowledge in the area. I actually did my university degree in um, video or transferring video over a wireless network. So there was like some elements of live streaming involved. So I, I wrote my dissertation on it. So I always had a bit of understanding. And then I got involved in Twitch um, many, many years ago. So um, felt like I had a lot to share and there wasn't that many good guides out on the internet of how to set up your stream or things like that. So I just started creating the videos purely for fun. And it just sort of snowballed from there really. So a lot of people have been mentioning uh, since we mentioned we we're having you on the show that you really help them start their streaming careers. Uh, what do you think are the biggest pitfalls or challenges that new streamers face? I think probably the hardest thing is how much technical setup there is. Um, a lot of people are hearing about streaming now for the first time, even though it's been around for such a long time. But like, it's really picking up steam with a lot of mainstream um, you know, people, people, celebrities, footballers starting to stream and things. So it's picking up a lot of momentum in, in traditional media. So a lot of new people are hearing about it. And um, I would say the hardest thing is just thinking that you can stream with your current, you know, laptop or whatever. It's actually super demanding to get a stream up and running. And there's a lot of things to manage. You're sort of running your own TV show. You're being the star of the TV show. You're providing the entertainment. You're trying to play a game probably as well as well as trying to manage scenes and thanking donators and all those kind of things. So I think people think it's easy and there's certainly a lot of good streamers make it look really easy, but actually there's a lot to learn and there's a lot of practice required to get good at it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, even with this stream ourselves, we've been experiencing some uh, some pains in that respect as uh, yeah. you witnessed just before. 
Uh, what advice would you give to a brand new streamer on uh, getting started out of the box? I would say probably take it slow. I think a lot of people expect everything to happen instantly. You know, I get a lot of people um, contacting me and coming into the Discord that we have for our community, just saying, you know, I've been streaming for three weeks. I've only got one viewer. I can't seem to climb to like five viewers or 10 viewers and they want to get Twitch affiliate or something like that. And this takes time. Like you have to get, you have to get good at it. And it's so competitive right now because I mean, if you just look at the Fortnite subdirectory of Twitch, you'll see that there's like 10,000 people trying to stream and probably 8,000 of them have got less than five viewers. So it's super competitive to get started. I would, my, probably my biggest advice um, from purely like a logical standpoint of what you should do is probably not to stream a mainstream game. Like the big games right now, Fortnite, League of Legends, PUBG, they're, they're, they're very top heavy. So they're dominated by big streamers and it's very hard to get noticed. I think you would have a lot more success if you picked up a smaller game with a lower viewer base. You know, something where the directory maybe only has 20, 20 ish streamers. Um, you've got a much better chance of, you know, getting hosted or like just getting noticed in that kind of directory and then growing your audience from there. I know that poses its own set of problems because some people will then want to change game and changing game with a viewer base is difficult. But I think it's just so tough now to get started in, in, a, in a directory like Fortnite where there's just so many people trying to stream it. Um, so yeah, I'd, pro I'd probably advise to stick to something smaller, something a little bit more niche. Um, are you playing any games at the moment? Uh, yes and no. Certainly not in the last two weeks. It's been like a mad... Uh, I mean, and a lot of my subscribers know all of this story, but I've, I've recently quit to do this full time with thanks from people in the community and just the channel, channel's growth has allowed me to do that. And the last two weeks I've been moving house into a new place where I've got a dedicated studio. So this is actually the first time a lot of people have seen even just a front on camera shot of the new studio because I moved in this week and it's just been mad assembling everything and building everything. I had some major pain points with my internet. So if I cut out in this video, I'm really sorry. I should be back online within a minute. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been quite the journey. Like uh, I haven't been able to play any games because I've just been mad all day building things from IKEA and trying to get things sorted. And like I, I'm behind on videos, definitely. Like I need to spend a good couple of months, I think, just cranking out content before I think about playing any games again. But but typically when I do have time, I like to play League of Legends. Quite high ranked in that. Um, haven't played Fortnite yet, but I did used to play quite a lot of PUBG and Overwatch and things like that. So I'd say I'm more typically an FPS gamer, but a lot of my mates still play uh, League of Legends, so I do play that from time to time. Well, um, congratulations on the on the going full time uh, with YouTube and starting into streaming as well. Uh, what led up to that decision? I've been thinking about doing it for about six months. Um, so, so even though the channel is only 18 months old, it's grown at just like such a phenomenal rate where it was a consideration even six months ago that I could possibly quit my job and do it full time. I live in one of the most expensive places in the world to live, London. I mean, as do you in Vancouver, but um, it's probably not the right place to try and run a YouTube channel full time. You should be living in like Bali or something super cheap. Yeah. But um, it was it was just purely a decision. I was moving house. There was an opportunity to have a full, stu full studio. I was moving away from my old job. I did, I did really like my old job, but this was always something that I wanted to do. And I just felt like I needed to eventually just jump ship and do it and commit and do it full time because the amount of time I could put into the channel compared to what I wanted to, like I had all these ideas of things that I wanted to do, things like podcasts and live streams and consultation and just creating more content. I, I didn't have time for it with working a full time job. So it got to this sort of crossroads where I'm certainly, I'm certainly taking a financial hit by quitting my job and doing it full time, but it's much less risky than it was six months ago, excuse me, when I was first considering it. Right. So um, you mentioned uh, living in London, of course, and, uh, and with us being in, in uh, Vancouver here, how do, you, how do you think the gaming and uh, streaming industry differs in the UK from the United States or Canada? 
I think certainly when comparing to America, um, the UK is probably a little bit behind. Um, but it's it's changing quite quickly. So I went to Twitch London uh, last weekend, the same weekend that I moved. I tried to do it all in one day, and it was just I turned up to Twitch London super sweaty and super tired. Uh, but it was so great to meet. There were so many streamers there, companies there, people to meet, and it was just like an awesome experience. I got to speak to so many people that I'd only spoken to through Twitter or through emails. So that kind of, you know, if you'd asked me that question a week ago before I went to Twitch London, I would say that we were like really far behind and America just seems to have the infrastructure for esports and for streaming much better than the UK does. But since going to Twitch London, I'm actually, I was actually really surprised. There's a lot of people that are managing to stream full time in the UK and it's such an appealing career. So it's, it's really great that, um, people are getting to do their dream jobs. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we're just going to take a quick break to plug a project we're working on. So uh, everyone in the chat, if you have a question for Pete or even for me, just uh, ask in the chat and we're going to answer some questions after this quick message. Introducing Streamlabs Merch, our all-in-one solution for branded custom apparel that represents you and your community. It's the fastest and easiest way to start your custom merch store get paid every month, receive custom alerts, and with worldwide shipping and lightning fast delivery, it's truly magical. So how's it work? We handle printing, shipping, fulfillment, and customer service for you so that you can keep doing what you do best. It's easy to set up and the upload wizard will help you create your own store in seconds. Don't have a logo? No worries, we can help you make one. Streamlabs merch gives creators another way to get paid doing what they love and lets viewers show their support beyond the broadcast with something they can hold in their hands and wear in real life. Create, design, and start your own custom merch store by visiting streamlabs.com forward slash merch now. Also tag us on Instagram wrapping your favorite streamer to be featured on our page, Streamlabs Merch. Now, oh, at Streamlabs Merch on Instagram. So let's just uh, pop into the chat now and see what... Uh, people have to say what have we got here my question for Pete is what are your summer plans and that's from X Ness my summer plans are pretty non-existent actually just want to get this studio finished which is very very close to being happening and then um, then just crank out content I haven't really got I've got holiday in September that's my first a proper break away so I just want to be want to be working because obviously now that I've quit and doing this full time like it is my livelihood and although I have some savings like it, it's definitely playing on my mind that I need to be creating content as much as I can um, so yeah definitely definitely will get to enjoy a holiday in early September but I want to earn it first with some some good content for the YouTube channel oh, I think it's safe to say you've uh, earned a little break already but uh, another question from uh, same user XNES. What is your plan for your first video in the new place, Pete? Uh, very first video is going to be like a new studio setup, like I've been filming over the last five days. The whole thing from like me moving out of my bedroom setup in uh, northeast London to moving into here, and it's completely different. I'm going to keep things this side of the camera for now, but the first video is going to be uh, me building everything from my desk and like all the new equipment that I've got and some of the brands that I've worked with who have been able to provide some equipment. So very first video will be like a full setup tour and it's going to be a little bit more vlog, a little less tutorial style, but I think it's still going to be pretty helpful for people that, you know, want to see um, what I consider like a, a great streaming setup. Um, after that, we're going to like continue back into tutorials. Like I've got Streamlabs tutorials to come, OBS tutorials to come. Um, got some exciting news that I have to keep to myself for now. Um, but like some exclusive videos, I would say. Um, but loads of content. Like that's probably the question I get asked the most is, especially by my friends that don't really understand streaming is like, have you got enough video ideas to do this full time? And I've got this list of like 300 video ideas. That I've just been waiting to get, to get going on. So, um, 
yeah, I'm really excited to create some content. Yeah, the very first video won't be tutorial based. It will it'll more be documenting my move and showing off all the new stuff that I've got. But um, after that, straight back to straight back to tutorials. Can you give us any hints on that uh, project you can't talk about? <laughs> uh, not right now. Under okay. an NDA for the moment. Right, um, that's fair. That's fair. Not not too far away. Uh, so if you've uh, tuned into any of our previous shows, it's safe to say we've experienced some growing pains with Streamlabs Live. Uh, what would you be? What would be your advice for this channel or a streaming talk show if you had any? I think talk shows and like podcasts and things like. It's way, way, way more to do with content than it is to do with how things look or fancy alerts or scene transitions or anything like that. If you get good guests on and you have good questions, then people will watch and people will listen to the podcast. Um, and that kind of transitions to normal streams as well. Like it's a lot of people like to think that, oh, I'm not big because I don't have this piece of hardware or I don't stream in this resolution, but it's way, way more to do with content. People will people will watch streams at lower resolutions if the content is good or if you're not good at a game they'll still watch it if the content is good um like a perfect example of that is pewdiepie on youtube up until like early this year we're still uploading in 720p like the biggest youtuber with at the time i think over 50 million subscribers and you know you have some people uploading in 8k and 4k and a lot of people thinking oh do i need 4k to work on youtube he was still doing 720p and that's like the perfect example of it doesn't really matter that much about the fine technical details it's much more important that you have good quality content um but yeah i really like what you guys are doing like uh this is exactly the kind of thing that i think should be happening in the streaming community like um people talking and helping each other out it's exactly what we try and do like it, the gaming careers community so i think it's uh, I think you're doing a good job uh, this is a question from Junior Jackson. Uh, will you be? S <laughs> is somebody he's what, you know? he's, yeah, he's uh, he's one of my patrons actually. Somebody that supports me financially. So he's he's recently just come back to streaming after a little bit of a hiatus. So it's good to see him in the chat. All right. Well, shout out to Junior Jackson there. Uh, so uh, he asks, will you be streaming games once you're settled in? That's a good question. Um, Something that I've played on my mind a bit. I don't know if people really care about me playing games. So I think when I do sort my internet out and can start streaming, it's probably more likely to be like tutorials. Well, not streaming tutorials, but more like uh, Q&A and like maybe some consultation and like doing channel reviews on people and just more helpful content, but live streamed. Uh, things like interviews as well. I'm not sure if... I, I don't want to take the gaming careers channel that I've built and then put my own live stream where I'm just playing League of Legends and struggling to climb out of Diamond or whatever. Um, so I have have thought about it. I definitely haven't reached a final decision. Um, but for now, I think like once my internet gets sorted, sorted the first few streams are just going to purely be um, similar sort of content to what I do on YouTube, but on a more like live uh, viewer um, interaction based type thing uh so this kind of leads into my next question actually uh, if you weren't doing gaming careers uh, what other projects would you like to pursue i mean anything in esports and streaming like um before i started working as a developer i actually was a freelance filmmaker and i worked with a few esports organizations and filmed so i went out with their like counter-strike team to a tournament and I film the whole tournament and the backstory and interviews and things like that. And that would then all be content that I'd edit for the esports organization. So I'd definitely still be doing something in this industry. Like it is just my passion. It's so easy to work on something that you're passionate about. I'm sure any streamers that are watching feel the same way. Um, so I don't know exactly what I'd be doing, but I would be looking to either use my dev skills in something streaming related or uh, cre keep creating video content around that kind of stuff. But I don't want to do anything else. This is what I want to do. I'm just so happy that I now have the opportunity to do it full time. Well, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's great. And you help so many people uh, as well do that themselves, um, which is such a great service. 
Uh, I've written here, um, what can people expect from your channel going forward? Uh, which I think you, you've already covered, but uh, if there's anything else maybe um, that we haven't brought up for that? I think um, certainly for the next two months, whilst my internet is still being sorted out, it's going to be just more of the same. So for people that haven't seen anything from me yet, it's YouTube-based tutorials on live streaming and on content creation within gaming. Um, so people that want to learn anything to do with Twitch or YouTube or Mixer, um, audio, video, all those kind of things, I've got like a, a bunch of videos based on that. And that's definitely what I'm going to concentrate on for the first two months. After that, hopefully, my internet is sorted out and I can branch out into other mediums, um, like some live streaming, as I've said, maybe start a podcast, um, do some consultation, you know, one-on-one -on -one stuff or group call type things. Uh, but though all of those rely on having a good, stable internet connection, which uh, currently I don't have, um, even though this live stream has managed to keep going, but literally five minutes before my internet crashed. So um, keep our fingers crossed that we'll stay connected. Um, but definitely next two months, I, I want to really reward all the loyal subscribers that I've had over the past 18 months and just hit them with loads of content because I've, I've, I do feel quite guilty that I haven't been able to put out anywhere near as much as I want to. And there's just so much that I want to get out there. Like I have this 300 videos ideas, 300 video ideas, and uh, you know some of them already written out in terms of scripts. So um, just creating content for the next two months. That's what people can expect. So if you haven't already subscribed, little plug, do head over to my YouTube channel. Um, I'm sure you might learn something new. And that's uh, youtube.com slash gaming careers. That's right, yeah. Yeah, I think I, I speak for everyone watching as well that uh, we're excited to see what you bring out. Uh, is there, Thanks so much for coming on the show today, by the way, Pete. No problem at all. Glad uh, to be on. Is there anything else you'd like to plug? Uh, no, not really. I mean, if there are streamers out there wanting to ask questions and things like that, then uh, we do have a Discord server, which has grown massively. I think we've just crossed 1,400 members in there now, and it's a massive community of streamers from streamers and content creators from all around the world um and there's plenty of rooms to talk about obs and stream labs and audio and all these kind of things so it's really like a great bustling community of people helping each other out so it's, it's a good place if you've got any questions or if you've got any advice to help other people i'd recommend joining our discord um which you can find it's in the description of every video on my youtube channel or or website all right, so um, thanks everyone for joining us today. That was uh, Pete from Gaming Careers, who you can find uh, at Gaming Careers on Twitter and YouTube and soon to be Twitch. Uh, if you missed it, we'll be posting a VOD on the Streamlabs YouTube channel, which you can find in the link below. We'll also be releasing the podcast as an audio download next Wednesday on all your podcasting platforms. You can follow Streamlabs on Twitter at Streamlabs HQ the podcast at Streamlabs Live, and me at Doug Vandelay. Join me next Friday, 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time when I talk to Devin from Simon Framer University Esports. Thanks, everyone.